What if I was to say there's a golf mat on the market that's to be primarily used for winter golf, can be used for summer golf for block practice, is robust, and also comes with two different types of lie, a tight lie and a more forgiving, fluffier lie for golfers who aren't as confident. Would you believe me? Shall we find out? Let's crack on. I've been sent a product by two guys, uh, Kev Shelton, Andy Sears, who've created a golf mat that I think is revolutionary. It sounds a bit weird that it's a golf mat that's revolutionary, but I really do think it is. So in 2017, they both got a bit fed up at playing, playing winter golf. The frustrations of playing off mats and all that kind of jazz, the fun was going out of it for them. So they created a brand called Spurk Golf that have started to boom and started to get bigger and bigger with each year. And they very kindly sent me two of the products to test. I'm all for this, so let's put it through the paces. What I like is the fact that Spurk gives you two options. Short pile mat, all which comes with the Spurks, and also a long pile mat with the Spurks as well. Now, this, the long pile one will be probably for somebody who's a little bit less confident hitting off tight lies. It has that little bit of give, which I'll show shortly. And yeah, it just gives a little bit more confidence. Personally, I prefer this. I like the short pile mat. I do like the tight lies. I like just nipping it off the top. That's just a personal choice, each to their own. It comes with the hole at the back there, as you can see. So if you wanted to, you can actually put a T-peg through in and still play with a T. It even comes with its own Spurt Golf tee. So whichever of the Spurt products you decide to get, you also get in the box an instruction uh, leaflet, which tells you exactly what you need to do, how you set it all up. You also get a bungee toggle. Now the bungee toggle even comes with instructions on what to do and how to put it on. So a quick demonstration now, not that you really need this, but quite simply, loop it onto the golf bag, with the spurks facing down, slot it in, and there you have it. Absolutely perfect, that works. Or, if you don't want to do that, for an extra cost, which I think is pretty good, you can have this. So, that's the spurk golf bag. Really handy little carry case, comes with its own little carabiner to connect onto the, uh, onto the golf bag good velcro and then out you come there you've got it there's your mat keeps it all protected you've also got a little protective sliding for when the the, the actual spur mats going in there so it doesn't get your golf bag dirty in any shape way or form i think that is a good little option a very tidy little option in fact so they claim it's the closest thing to playing off grass well let's have a look let's have a see so as the instruction tells you, put the mat down, click into place, golf ball in the front third, and let's strike one away. Well, that stayed in place. That was hitting a nine iron. So let's go and try it on the course and see what it's like with other various clubs. Let's see actually good how good it really is under pressure. So okay, let's go and test it on the course. So, put the, the, the mat on the ground, stomped in as we're meant to do. Tee pegs, so it had the option, you can use any tee peg you want. Castle tees. Dead simple, sits in perfect. Or if you're not a fan of castle tees, you can use your standard tees. And that does go in, you can feel the bite in the actual turf as well. So that's really, really good. So you can still have that. T height wise, absolutely fine. No issues at all. So let's give this one a smack down there. And then let's see what it's like going on the rest of the course with different clubs, fairy woods, irons, wedges. And let's see where we go and what we're like around the greens. Perfect, ideal. So with other mats on the market, and this is just one that I've been using in the past, yes, you know, 
any amount is good to protect your, your golf course, but I find it a bit of a faff. So you've got the carabiner, all right? You've got options, just use string or whatever. You've got a carabiner that's at the edge of it. That just gets in my way for um, swing path. It's, you could put a tee in place, that's fair enough, but it's the faff getting a tee out all the time, putting that in. But then when you put the golf ball down, for me, it feels like, you know, if, I, if I'm going to touch that mat, the ball's going to move. You can see it's wobbling there. It doesn't feel, it feels like it could topple. I'm just not overly keen, as I said, with the swing path, carabiners in the way. Again, it's all options. I, I could take that off each time, but it just, it's something that plays on my mind. I don't necessarily want to hover the club to, to swing down. I don't know. Whereas with the spurt mat, I don't have that issue. However, if you ask somebody who's wanting to have that bit more of a teed up height like this actually provides then that's when the other mat can come in handy so in using the longer pile putting that in place if you just you want to feel that bit of confidence with it being teed up that little bit more or just feeling it's just just holding above above a little bit it can still lend to confidence and see i've put the club on the behind the ball there there's no risk of that moving it's secure it's all in place and the strike off it is great you know, you can afford to hit it a little bit chunky and you'll probably still get through it a little bit. I do like that concept. I think that's a really good option for people. A really, really good option. So, got about 220 yards now to roughly about the front of the green on our first. I'm going to place the mat down, use it as an alignment aid. Do as it says to do, stand on it and push it forward. That's it now all locked in place. Golf ball puts into the front. And then this should be nice and secure away, fingers crossed. And let's see how we go. Now, that wasn't a particularly good hit. I've caught that fat. That mat's not budged an inch. It's not budged at all. Now, other mats, that would have been somewhere a long way down the fairway, and I'd be running after it. That's really good for mishits. I'm liking that. I don't have to prat about with anything. I do like that. So after a poor, fat, chunky shot, I've now got 78 yards to the pin. So I'll put my spurt mat down. As it says, foot on, stamp it into place. All good. Golf ball is then placed two-thirds on the mat. Happy days. And now we just seem to hit it somewhere near that flag. I'll take that all day long. And again, mat is in place and that's it in the wedge. No complaints with that one. So short game wise for me, this product is even better. It's a greenkeeper's dream. You don't have to worry about, you know, you're not going to punch any divots up. You don't have to go and take it into the rough and play it out of the rough if you buy the side of the green. So again, mat in, put it in place. Put the ball down. And hopefully, a very tidy release one. And that even has some nip on it. So it's really good. The tight compact one is fantastic. So I use a short game method called the three releases by a gentleman called Dan Greaves at Woburn Golf Club. And this mat is now going to be quite interesting to see how it's going to be to play off a tight lie, going over a bunker, do we call a release two method. And let's see how it is just to nipping it off the, the top of the surface. It's not overly bounced. It stayed in place. It's good on the short game factor anyway. Back in the Warren Cassell Golf Club. Thank God for that. Summary. What do I think of these products? Very impressed. Uh, very, very impressed indeed. I think it, it ticks a lot of boxes. It's robust. It will stay in place when you're hitting the shots. That's, that's a key one. 
The biggest key of the lot is protecting the golf course, as always, as any winter map would do. But if you look at it in terms of what you can do during the summer, if you want to do block, block practice, that then it's not a bad option to use block practice on the fields or whatever. You're not taking divots up. It saves you having to try and find a box to put the seeds back in. You know, the turfing of it all. I think the green keepers will love you for that one. I really, really do. It's got the option where, as I said, for the tight light, it's good for the golfer who likes to play off that. For the golfer that likes to play off something that's got a little bit more give, uh, as a, a little bit more bounce to it, then again, really good option. Also as well, which I don't think many people have thought about, if you have the, the luxury of having a nice back garden that you can put a net up, you don't have to put a mat in situ like some people do. One of these, slot it into the, into the, the grass, away you go. You're not taking divots up in your back garden. So if you're doing simulator practice or whatever, at home in your back garden, or just into the net, again, really good piece of kit, all year round use. That's the key thing. If you look at it as well, certainly over here in the UK, four, sometimes up to five months in a year, or throughout the year, we're having to use mats off fairways. That's a big chunk of a year, let's be honest with you. So for the price that you're outlaying for it, which is always a stumbling point for people, is what is the cost? There are cheaper options available. There's the ones that I've sh that, you know, shown you earlier. But for the price that you're getting it for and what you get with it in terms of with the bungee cord and stuff, or if you pay a little bit extra to get the bag, which I think personally is the best option, I think that would be good if it came as it was, but that's just my personal thing. Then I think it's a good product without a doubt. It's value for money. The amount of times you're going to be using that mat in a 12 month period, it seems common sense to use something that you feel comfortable with, especially if you're on a golf course that's measured and is still able to do handicap qualifiers on. That would be a really good piece of kit to get. So that's the end of the review, guys. Uh, I've tried to keep it as short and sweet as I could do. If you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. All the details for this product will be in the description. Please take a look at it at the links and stuff. And if your golf pro actually sells these, then please, by all means, and please support your golf pro. Get them from the golf pro as well. All the best, guys. Hope you enjoy yourself and happy winter golf. Take care.